volare oh cantare oh 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 nel blu dipinto di blu felice di stare là su Hello guys, I'm Fabio Novembre, I'm in Milano in my house and I am 54 years old, like Studio 54, you know? From a very ordinary family. And I must say that I was born in the south of Italy and, uh, and my family was, was very plain, you know, no, no crazy thing about it. And uh, we are four brothers, I mean, three brothers and one sister, and two lovely parents. I mean, very, very ordinary uh, background. For me, family now is, of course, my daughters. You know, their name is actually Verde and Celeste, which means green and sky blue. When you're 17, you don't know anything. So everything gets accidental. You know, my brother, my older brother, already studied in Milano. He was studying economy in Milano. And exactly for this reason, I didn't want to come to Milano because I didn't want to be around him. And so I thought, I want to study architecture. Okay, I want to study architecture. That was kind of clear. But I wanted to go either to Florence or, or to Venice. But then I came here in Milano to visit my brother. It was a very sunny day. We went to a park and they said, but Milano is not that bad. And so I changed my mind. But you know, if the day wasn't sunny and it didn't bring me to a park, I would have been here. I mean, that's kind of funny how accidental choices are. Yes, my, my father, used to have a um, furniture shop in a little village called Copertino, which actually sounds like Cupertino, though it's, a, it's actually um, a gemellaggio, a twin uh, situation between the two cities. Provincia di Lecce, province of Lecce, which is another small town in the south of Italy. So it really come from nowhere. And my father used to have this furniture shop, but at the same time he was helping his clients to furnish their houses. And my father was very creative. I must say that uh, I was a very peculiar student because, okay, go back to 1984 when I arrived in Milano and the computers were unexisting totally. I mean, probably they were in some lab and, and they were big as a room so that forget about it. And so you were forced to go with pencil or rapidograph and, and in that they were the tools of each student. And unfortunately, I'm really not gifted for drawing. <laughs> it was kind of, uh, you don't want to run a marathon and you are without legs, you know? <laughs> it was really like, like a problem. But at the same time, I was a volcano of ideas. So that given that um, there were a lot of exams, there were group exams, I was trying to be the brain of the group. But of course, they were all students. They all wanted to give ideas. So there was always this big fight, you know, how things were evolving in, in these examinations. But, but really, it was fun. You know, nowadays, things have changed a bit. I mean, like, um, there were not so many movies as there are now. And, uh, and actually, now, after so many years, I would say that uh, making movies in, in three dimensions can be a very interesting challenge, you know? Because then you, you deal with the, with the physicality of people. They're both design expressions. You know, breathing and loving, it's design. You know, design is not something apart. Uh, first of all, things I designed are, um, 
lots of people say that they're a, a provocation. But I don't want to provoke anyone. I mean, it's really provocation is not one of my aim, of my topics, of my goals, not at all. And uh, I just do what I feel like. Trends for me is such a bad word. You know, I mean, what, what, are, what trends are about? I mean, when people say, ah, this is the year of the orange. I really think people are crazy. I don't believe in trends at all. I mean, of course, there are, there are some topics that come out and that we all embrace, but they're not trends. Let's not call them trends. They, they are needs. They're not trends because the trends look like um, a fashionable thing, you know, like, ah, yeah, let's go this direction. No, I think that when you go a direction, when you take a direction, it's because you cannot do anything else. You know, for me, there is kind of a necessity to do things. Mentor is, is such a, a beautiful topic to me because I have had so many mentors. I have had so many maestros, that's how we say in, uh, in Italian. I believe that all of you, like myself, felt in some moments of their life like alone in a dark night. And when you feel like that, you just have to raise your vision, you know, raise your eyes and look at the sky. You will see the stars. And the stars will um, illuminate the darkness that you feel into. And those stars are actually your mentors, your maestros. You know, lots of times you don't meet your maestros, but you choose them. You pick them, select them and say, that star is Ettore Sozzas. That star is Alessandro Mendini. And, and there are so many, that star is Federico Fellini. There are so many stars in my sky. I always love music. I always heard to a lot of music. Since COVID started, I took an old guitar of mine that I hadn't been playing for 35 years. Okay, so I took it back and I started playing again. And now I play every day from one to two hours. <laughs> and I am not listening to music anymore. You know how I filter the music that I like through my guitar and I sing. I spoke to, um, uh, to Tom and, uh, and we said we must do it. We definitely must do it because then um, Tom plays best guitar. So I play normal guitar, we, we can definitely jam together. And, uh, and seriously, it's so liberating. It's kind of, um, of a strange topic, you know? Uh, I believe there is so many things to see on our planet. And, uh, and I'm sure that even Elon Musk, which is a person that I really estimate a lot, didn't see them. So I really don't understand this need of going to Mars. I mean, it's, uh, it's like a, a rescue situation for, uh, for humans. I have no idea. I mean, it's like, I don't know what's happening in his mind. If you want to feel the same condition of an astronaut, you know what, I suggest you to go scuba diving. You know, it's fantastic if you if you float in the ocean, in the water, you know, with the with all the mask and the oxygen and stuff, you you have no sense of gravity. You see, our planet is full of uh, resources, you know, to, to discover, to to live on your skin, you know, jump with the parachute or but you know, there are so many beautiful things you can do. You feel like flying. And the, and so I really don't understand that much this need of going to Mars, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, for me, to my, you know, list of priorities is number 327. <laughs> I must say, I still play, I still play football. That's really funny. I still play football even if I'm 54, 54 years old, as I told you. And, uh, but I love the game. And actually, you know what, that's also my, there's a lot of fear in that as well. You know, playing a team game teaches you so much. Eccentric. So if I had to say one piece of clothing I can do without is a leather jacket, you know, because I feel a biker, you know, till the end. <laughs> like I really, I really like that. The, 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 um, the leather jacket is something really I cannot miss. No, you, you know, Pablo Picasso, 
which I really like and admire is one of my stars, used to say in Spanish, busco lo que encuentro, which translated means I look for what I find. I don't have any expensive habits. You know, I'm a very simple person. I always say I want everything, but nothing. I'm going very often to Camparino. Camparino is a, is a place that was made famous by the, the futurist artists. It's a corner in Galleria, very central and uh, facing the Duomo. And uh, it was just being renovated. And they very much like to go have uh, aperitif, lunch, dinner. It's a beautiful place. My breakfast is very simple. I drink tea and um, a few biscuits and um, slices of fruit, that's it. Or sometimes yogurt with the muesli and honey. All right, that's difficult because I'm not very good as a, as a chef. But pasta with the tomato sauce, I'm very good at that. I mean, it's really like the, the, the classical Italian Studio 54. <laughs> There is a sentence from Leo Longanesi, a great Italian intellectual, and he says, Italians are good at nothing, but capable of everything. <laughs> and that's what defines them, I believe. You know, I must say, I, I don't do parties for myself. Uh, almost never. I, I never celebrate my birthday. I love to party in, in other people's party. Yeah, I love to celebrate people, not myself. Leather jacket. I drive an old Porsche from 1976, yellow. Ugliest emotion for me is envy. You never have to be envious of anything. Apple. I will sketch. They make sense. They both make sense. Penne. With spaghetti, you get dirty. Both. You know, for me, it's hard to decide because, you know, I, I love both always, all the time. I'm a Libra. You know, that's the, 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 the problem of my life. I'm a Libra. I always want to find balance. Both. Pool party. <laughs> This hand <I'm> clear. <laughs> Fine. Human vision. Youth. Need. Rainbow. My love. I love it. It's there. I love my children. I love all children. Beautiful, beautiful, a great day, a better day, even better. Canceling borders between nations. I heard there was a secret short The David played and he pleased the Lord But you don't really care for music, do you? Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall and the major lift, the baffled king composing, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.